Britain's Conservatives have won an overall majority in the country's general election, decisively ending three and a half years of political gridlock. The opposition Labour Party, they are on course for an historic defeat after a near wipeout in their traditional heartlands. Overnight, Prime Minister Boris Johnson appeared at his own constituency count, said his government had been given a powerful new mandate to finally take the UK out of the European Union. The Labour Party blamed Brexit for their crushing losses, with some uh, seats still left to declare. Here's a snapshot of the results um, as we go to air. Okay, as you can see there, the Conservatives have an outright majority passing that crucial 326 seat threshold with uh, constituencies some still left to declare um, their final results now this could be the biggest conservative win since margaret thatcher in 1987 for the labor party it is one of their worst results ever they lost several dozen seats to the conservatives jerry mccorbin saying he will step down before the next election Okay, we're joined now by our UK political expert here in the studio, Alex Forrest Whiting. Good morning, Alex. And from London by our correspondent, Birgit Mass. Uh, Birgit, good morning to you as well. Let's start in London. Can you bring us up to date, Birgit, with the very latest? Well, yes, we've had Conservative MPs, of course, rejoicing about this gain. I mean, it's been a phenomenal night for the Conservatives and there are happy faces all through when we see, when we look at accounts and when we see constituency after constituency, uh, conservatives being elected again. And I think this is something... Uh, okay, Baggett, uh, we're having a problem with, with the sound uh, one, connection, Baggett. We're going to have to leave it uh, there. Let's, let's um, take it to the studio here. Uh, Alex, uh, what was behind this stunning conservative uh, victory? Um, the Tories breaking through the red wall in some of those uh, Labour strongholds. I mean, it has been extraordinary for Boris Johnson in particular. And let's face it, it was a gamble, and it was a gamble that paid off. He had a very clear message, one message, get Brexit done. But he was also appealing to those formerly Labour heartlands, mm. trying to persuade people, vote for me, I'll get Brexit done, and also I'm going to offer you things that perhaps uh, you would have thought Labour would always have done in the past. Mm. So I am going uh, to promise you more money for public spending. There will be more police. I am going to build more hospitals. There will be more nurses. And those messages, particularly over Brexit, cut through and I think we have the Jeremy Corbyn factor as well, which is that many people didn't see Jeremy Corbyn as a leader. OK, a lack of trust there with Jeremy a lack Corbyn. Of, a lack of trust and many concerns about his past, and I think that that had cut through to voters on the doorstep. OK, let's take a listen now to what uh, Boris Johnson had to say earlier this morning as it became clear that he'd won an outright majority. Uh, but above all, I want, to thank, I want to thank the people of this country for turning out to vote in a December election that we didn't want to call, but which I think has turned out to be a historic election that gives us now, in this new government, the chance to respect the democratic will of the British people, to change this country for the better, and to unleash the potential of the entire people of this country. And that is what we will now do and if we are lucky enough to be returned, as the polls, as the exit polls seem to suggest, then that work will begin tomorrow. Thank you all very much. Or rather, I should say, not tomorrow, today. Today. Thank you all. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Alex, uh, was it Brexit? mainly, that won Boris Johnson this election, his get-it-done message? Well, I think that, let's face it, the UK and much of the world have been sick of Brexit. It's gone on for more than three years. And there you had a man with a very, very simple message. Mm. Get Brexit done. Yes, it cut through. We know it's going to be more complicated than that. But it was a simple message on the doorstep for people, and it's what many of them wanted. We talked about uh, some of those la formerly Labour heartlands voting Tory for the first time 
sometimes ever. I mean, it is extraordinary. And many of them voted leave. They wanted to leave the European Union back in that uh, referendum in 2016. Their own party, the Labour Party, not quite sure what it was doing, a very complicated message it was mm -hmm. sending. And Boris Johnson's message was clear-cut, get Brexit done. And that is now what he can say he will do. OK, let's go back to uh, London now. I think we have the sound up there. Uh, there, uh, Birgit, where does Labour go from here? I mean, they've lost, what, over 70 seats. Uh, Jeremy Corbyn said he's going to stay on until the next election. Is he the right person? Is that a good decision? I mean, what happens to Labour now? Well, as Alex already said, there has been so much this. Um, people really did not like Labour on, on the doorstep, and they did not in particular like Jeremy Corbyn. I mean, I've been to the north of England, I've speak, spoken to people there, and there was hardly anyone who had a good thing to say about the leader of the Labour Party. His message and his whole style, I think, did not uh, resonate with voters there. He said he's not going to go uh, and lead the party into the next election. So the question is, when is he really going to go? We don't know just yet. We, don't, we do know that behind the scenes there, there is a struggle about the heart and soul of the Labour Party. Jeremy Corbyn, somebody who is seen as being more traditional, old Labour, a very uh, left-wing in UK terms, m mostly a very left manifesto, lots of money that the uh, Labour Party wanted to spend, and, and many people, I think, in, in the UK were a bit dubious about whether that would be the right thing. So we have, within the Labour Party, also a more, a more centrist wing, and these people will try and regain control. I mean, those were the ones who were in power under Tony Blair for such a long time. Mm -hmm. They have been sidelined under, under Jeremy Corbyn and his movement. The question is, can they now come back or is the party for the time being uh, in, in the grip of the left? So that will be a really fascinating uh, struggle to, to watch it, out it, for. It will be. And, and for the Conservatives, they have a, a, a huge opportunity right here. They've won over, we'll, we'll find, get the final number there, tens of thousands of Labour voters. Now, now, their challenge is going to be to hold on to those people, to hold on to those Labour voters that they've taken in the, the Labour strongholds there. What do the Conservatives need to do to keep these voters in the Conservative camp, the Labour voters they've won over? Well, yes. I mean, they really need to govern for the whole of the country. They need to govern for people who voted leave and also for people who voted remain. You could argue that the, the time of slogans uh, is over now and now they really have to deliver. And in order to keep those uh, ex-Labour voters, obviously they have to deliver for those people who, who voted for Brexit because they felt that they were somehow cut off. Many people in the north of England fe feel uh, left behind they see London thriving. They see a whole different life uh, in, in London than it is uh, they feel in, in, in their hometowns and, and cities. Mm -hmm. So they will want to see action. They will want to basically be reined in into the fold of, of the whole country. And the question is whether Boris Johnson can deliver that. But for now, he's got the majority to get his Brexit deal through. So that will be his really his relief that he can act uh, in a manner that he wants to act, that he's not held back mm -hmm. by by the extremes, you could argue, of, of his own party and that he wants to um, get Brexit through and then he says he's going to deliver. But the, many people will be doubtful whether he can really do that, but he's got okay. now the mandate in the next five years to do that. Alex, we're looking at a, a, a massive earthquake, a seismic shift in the political landscape in Britain. Can you give us a sense of what's happened? <laughs> well, it has been... I know it's early <laughs> to do that. Well, well, it has been a seismic shake across the UK, but perhaps um, we could see it coming. Uh, we knew that there were many people in the Labour heartlands who had said throughout this campaign and before that they didn't uh, see Jeremy Corbyn as a, a potential leader and certainly that they weren't going to vote for him and that Boris Johnson did cut through, particularly with his Brexit message. Mm. The question now is, what happens to the United Kingdom? Boris Johnson, we can now assume, is going to get his Brexit deal through Parliament and then the UK will leave the European Union 
at the end of January next year. However, at what expense? And there is a big possibility here now with what has happened because we haven't talked about it yet, but Scotland has very much voted for the Scottish Scotland nationalists. Scotland is key right here. It's very key. They've yeah. voted for the... Uh, there's been a huge swing towards the Scottish Nationalist Party up there under Nicola Sturgeon. And the question now is... Could Brexit come at the expense of a breakup of the union? So a okay, well let's, of the, let's back the, up there for, the for our Kingdom. viewers. Um, for the breakup, there'd have to be a referendum. Um, two questions: Will the Scottish Nationalist Party push for that referendum? If they do manage to agree that that's what they want, will London, will Downing Street, let it happen? Well, there was a referendum in 2014 which the Nationalists lost. Of course. The SNP, the Scottish Nationalists, are going to push for it again. Um, we think it's unlikely that Boris Johnson would say yes to that. However, there is still the possibility that they could uh, do an illegal uh, referendum. That was actually what David Cameron, the, the, the um, Prime Minister at the time of that referen referendum in 2014, was worried would happen with them, which is why he gave that referendum to Scotland. So there is a lot to play for here in the future, uh, particularly over Scotland and what now happens. So we cannot just assume that this is all a done deal and that the UK will get out of the EU and everything will be fine because there is still a lot of politics going on bubbling under the surface. OK, a lot of politics are bubbling under the surface. You've been looking into that. You've been doing some reporting. Can you tell us about that? Well, it was about Boris Johnson in particular. Now, he is somebody that I have followed a lot um, in my past and uh, particularly when he was the London mayor. I covered that election in mm -hmm. 2012. So I knew him fairly well. Then he was considered um, a, a conservative, a, a sort of a one nation Tory. So quite central, quite socially liberal. But now many see him on the right of the party, particularly because of Brexit and because of his promises. Mm -hmm. What are we going to see now with Boris Johnson? And here is my report. Throughout the election campaign, Boris Johnson drove home one message. And it seems his publicity stunts up and down the country have paid off. This is the other ready time. This is, the, this is the get Brexit done. This is, this is, a, this is the perfect method for what we're going to do in the, in the, in the run-up to Christmas. He made it all look so easy. But at times, Johnson's carefully choreographed campaign ran into real-life problems. He struggled to deal with a reporter's question about a sick four-year-old boy forced to lie on a hospital floor in northern England because of a lack of beds. I refuse to look at the photo. You've taken my phone, put it in your pocket, Prime Minister. His mother says the NHS is in crisis. What's your response? Oh, I'm sorry, look. I, 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 it's, a, it's a terrible, terrible photo. And his critics say this is the real face of Boris Johnson. A dangerous politician who makes empty promises, including over Brexit. Can you make a promise today to the British public that you will not go back to Brussels and ask for another delay to Brexit? Yes. And sorry. I can. And would you I'd rather, rather be, I'd rather be dead in a ditch. Johnson was, of course, forced to break that promise and request another delay from the EU. Stop the coup! Stop the coup! Stop he was also accused of ripping up the rule book by suspending British Parliament in order to try to force MPs to back his Brexit deal. The Supreme Court ruled that move was unlawful. Proceeding in Parliament. Those setbacks seem a far cry from the Boris Johnson who spent eight years as Mayor of London. Popular and personable, it appeared this former journalist with a complicated private life was above the usual political conventions. But woe betide anyone of whatever age who stood in his way. Johnson's ambition was never far from the surface. He always wanted to be Prime Minister. Many have been surprised at just how ruthless he's become, even expelling 21 of his own MPs, including Winston Churchill's grandson. Boris Johnson now has the majority he needs to take the UK out of the EU. Fixing his divided country, though, will take much more than a few photo ops.
Well, that is for sure. Alex, you've been covering uh, uh, Boris for years. Thanks so much for that report. Um, what is it going to take? Which Boris Johnson do we need to see to pull this country together so divided as, as it's been over the Brexit years, we'll call them that, the last three and a half years? Does he have the character? Is he the man to do this? Well, it's a good question. Look, he's got a very, very good majority now. That gives him more scope for manoeuvre. That could mean that he can say to the right of his party, um, you've had your say, yes, you're important, but actually now I need to get back to the Boris Johnson who was loved when he was mayor of London mm. and who can put a, you know, can, can sprinkle stardust again over the UK because he was well loved back in those years. He's been much been seen much more as a divisive figure now. He now needs to say to those new Labour voters, I've promised you the earth and I will now try to deliver it. I am going to make a difference because he will want to get re-elected in five years time. This He will want to prove that he should always have been PM and that he will remain Prime Minister possibly for the next 10 years or so. That is a very big order to fill, and that certainly is a perspective for the Conservatives. Let's go uh, back to London, if we could. Uh, uh, Birgit, we have a very different Britain today, don't we, that as people wake up this morning, uh, can you give us your perspective? What type of Britain is the nation waking up to today? Yes, I mean, a lot of people who voted for the Conservatives will let out a sigh of relief because they want the country to stop arguing about Brexit. And Alex has said it, his message was phenomenal and easy and made it seem like this is uh, a child's play so that he's the one to actually put an end to all this debate about Brexit. Whether this is true or not, we will see because he has set himself a very small time frame, just a matter of month, and many people are doubting that. But this is what a lot of people want to believe, and this is why they voted for him. And they will be relieved that he has this majority and that he can can act in a way that, that he sees fit. However, half of the country has voted for Remain, and we've seen the Remain votes, vote split. Uh, in this election and and a lot of those people will be utterly devastated because they're going to lose this uh, status that's precious for them being part of the European Union. No doubt Boris Johnson will push um, the withdrawal through within a matter of weeks and then a lot of people will feel sad and, and angry and alienated possibly and this whole mm -hmm. polarization that we have seen in British politics where the language got so toxic and where people have accused each other of of being mean and and of being nasty that you know that will possibly not go away very quickly because it has really deeply entrenched british society in the last years big at moss thanks so very much for that from london this morning alex forrest whiting here in the studio thanks as well for your analysis